Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to be going through how we make a third person character controller with both all the camera movement and the player movement. Just a quick disclaimer, this video is not explained extremely well how I made everything. This video would have been easily an hour long if I had to explain everything that I did. So a lot of the terms and the functions and so on I go over rather quickly just so you can have a look at the code and hopefully follow the process of me writing the code. I spent the last two days trying to set up uh, the script and make everything so it works how I'm happy with it and so hopefully you guys still like the end product. If you have any questions please do write them in the description below and if you want it I can also make a follow-up video explaining everything a bit more clearly. So first of all I've just set up a very basic scene and I've set up a very basic player. The player has a character controller on him and that's really about it. Just going to remove the collider here. And that's pretty much everything that he has. And the environment as well, nothing special. I just have the ground plane and I have the wall. Um, so first of all, what you want to go, what you want to do is you want to go to the window and to the package manager and go into the Unity registry up here. Search for Cinemachine. And here you'll be finding Cinemachine and import that. Cinemachine is Unity's tool to make smooth character or camera movement. It has a lot of really strong camera features, which is really good to use so we don't have to make them from scratch. Now, if you then right click out here, you go to Cinemachine and we want to make a virtual camera. And we can just call this CM normal, for example, if this is going to be our normal view. Here under the Cinemachine virtual camera, there's a little follow. We want this to be following our player. Now, you can set the field of view to whichever you'd like. I prefer 60. I like that. Now, if we go up to our game view here, you can see what the camera sees. And this is where we're going to be modifying a lot of things. So first of all, under aim here, you can see it right now set to composer. We want to set that to POV. Immediately you'll already see a difference. Now also under body, like we just set the aim POV, we also under body want to set it to the framing transposer. Now what you see here is still a total view of what the camera sees, but this blue box actually means what does the camera focus on? What is the main part that we want to focus on? So first of all, I'm just going to turn off dampening on the X and the Y axis. I don't like dampening on these and I'm actually going to turn down the dampening just a little bit on the Z axis. Now we can also set some look ahead smoothing. I like that quite a bit. So let's just put that to 10. Now we can also set the Y offset a little bit to make it look into the neck of the player. And you can also, first of all, let's set the camera distance way down. Let's do something like, let's do 2.3, maybe 2.4. And now we can set the offset properly. Now we can also set the screen X and the screen Y. This is so we want him to look, uh, we want to look over his shoulder a little bit. So let's try and do it like this, like so. I quite like that. There's also this little center and activate here. I'm going to disable this. Now, as I mentioned before, this blue square here is pretty much the focus on the camera. And we want to put the focus onto sort of the shoulders of the player here. So I'm going to try and make sure it's as centered on the shoulders of the player as possible, like so. And you can play around with these settings in the cinema machine how you like it to look, but I'm just going to stick with this for now. Let's start working on the scripting. So let's go into scripts and let's set up a player controller. And let's attach the script to our player, like so. And let's open up the script. Now, here I have the script and there's quite a few variables that we want to set up. So first of all, I always like using headers for this. So I'm going to do a base setup here. And here we're going to have quite a few variables. So we want a float for our walking speed. Let's just set that to, for example, four. And I also want a public float for the running speed. I'm gonna to set to something like seven. Then I also want to be able to track the jump speed. And I wanna be able to set a gravity, which I'm just gonna to set to something like 20. And then I want to be able to set up a turn speed for the player. Now, this is actually not how fast we can look around. This is how fast the player will turn um, with the camera. I'm going to show you, I'll explain later what this means. We're also going to need a reference to the character controller on the player. I'm just going to call it character controller with a small C. And we're going to need a vector that we're going to be using later. So right now this is just going to be vector 3.0 and I'm going to call this move vector. Now we also want a bool for can move. This is just if we have some scenarios, for example, if we're pausing or so on, we want to be able to set this to false so we no longer can move. And then uh, we need a few things, which is going to be a private vector 3 for our input. I'm sorry, this just needs to be a vector 2. So we're also going to need a private vector 2 for our input. Then we need uh, a private quaternion to keep track of our free rotation. And then we want a private vector 3 to keep track of our target direction. These last three and the turn speed 
are all to a part of the third person camera movement and the rest of them is a basic setup for a character controller. So in the start function, first of all, we want to grab our character controller. So that's just equals to get component character controller. And now for good measure, let's also just lock our cursor. All right now in our update loop, um, first of all, we want to have a bool to check if we're running. And then we're going to immediately update this bool and check if we are input.getKey. And I'll just set this to key code dot left shift. So this is a typical running for me. So here we are checking if running. Um, and now this is where things get a little bit interesting because I had a hard time setting this up properly to work with the movement. Now it does work. The first thing that we want is to keep track of which speed should we be using. So I use just uh, something called current speed, uh, which if you guys don't know, you can do a one line if statement. What you basically do is first of all, you set the condition. So this means that can, if can move is true, then we write this question mark and then we let it know uh, in case it's, you know, if it's true and then do like this and if it's false, like so. This is how you can set up single uh, if statement in one line. Now this is just to make the code much cleaner looking. Now what I actually have done is I've actually set up two if statements. So what we want to, if we can move, we want to check another if statement in here. And if we cannot move, the, our current speed is just zero. So therefore we can't move. Now what I want to check in here is are we running? And if we're running, we want to be using the running speed. And if not, we want to be using the walking speed. So I hope this makes sense to you. If we can move, it checks this, checks whether we should use the running speed or the walking speed. And if we cannot move, it just uses zero. Now we also want a float to keep track of our movement direction uh, Y, which is obviously if we jump, this is to be able to apply our gravity later on. Now also something I quickly skipped is we also want to populate this vector two we made up here, which is input. So what we want to do is we want to set the input dot X to be equals to the input dot get axis. And we want to get the horizontal axis. Oops input.get axis and then horizontal and we want to do the same for the vertical axis and the input.y we're populating the uh, input variable with our input from the axis which is horizontal and vertical now we actually need to do another check that seems quite alike so i'm just going to copy paste this two more times and write float and float in front and now we just want to call this uh, horizontal and we can just call this one vertical. And we obviously check the horizontal and the vertical on these. The reason why I'm not using the same is, uh, well, you'll actually see right now is we got to use them to make sure they're never negative. So what we're going to do right now, just to explain a bit further, is when we rotate the camera and move the camera, we want the controls to be relative to the camera's direction, right? So if we press on the D key, we want him to walk to the right. If we press right, if we press left, we want him to walk to the left for the camera. But what will happen when you get an axis like this is if you press the positive button, for example, on the horizontal axis, D is the positive button. So the horizontal axis will turn into one. But if you press on A, which is the negative part of the horizontal axis, it will return minus one or negative one, which we don't want. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to make sure that this is never that the horizontal and vertical axis that we say here are never going to be negative. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do if vertical is less than zero, which means it's a negative number. Uh, we're just going to time uh, times that with minus one. So this this is pretty pretty much just a way to invert it to make sure that if it's under and we're going to do the exact same for the horizontal times equals to minus one, just like that. So now we basically inverted them if they ever go negative. So this means no matter if we press on an A or D, it's going to be a positive. And then we're also going to have a new float, which is just our total move where we just add the vertical and the horizontal together. Oh, I just realized I wrote them with capital as well. I don't like that. Uh, I hope you're following along. I know this is really difficult to understand. I also fiddled with it for quite a while. So I'm just trying to provide you with a script and somewhat of a description along the way. Now we also need some sort of reference to which direction is forward. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a transform dot transform direction to the vector three dot forward uh, axis. We're going to be using this reference later on. Oh, we're actually going to be using this reference right now. So I'm going to take the move direction, which we defined in the beginning and make that equals to forward times move. And now what we want to do is we want to take this move direction uh, director 
We're gonna take move direction and we're actually gonna normalize it. And we're gonna do that as a function. Like so. So now this whole vector is normalized. Uh, and then we're actually just gonna add the movement speed or the current speed, uh, which we applied earlier, like so. And now the move direction also includes our total speed. So now if you remember this uh, target direction that we have up here. So now we've set up everything required to set up the movement. This is pretty much just everything that's required to set up the movement. But right now we're not rotating the player and we're not moving the player. We just have all the variables pretty much ready for moving the player. What we need to do now is we need to rotate the player before we actually start moving him. Because what we're doing is we're just going to be moving him forward in the direction he's turning. And we're going to be turning him relative to the camera. So now we need to focus on how do we turn him. If you remember up here, we defined a target direction and this is actually what we got to fix now. So just to make it a little bit better, the code, I'm going to make a public void, which is update target direction. And it's going to take no requirements. And we're just going to call that from here. So we're calling this once every frame. So we're going to keep a new variable or a, might as well be a vector three, but I'm just going to call this forward. And this is going to refer to our camera dot main transform dot transform direction for the vector three dot forward axis. And now we're just going to make sure that we reset the Y position so we don't actually change the player's uh, rotation on this. So we're just going to set that to zero. Now what we're going to do is we're also going to get the, a variable called right, which is the exact same idea. So we can just copy this. And then in here we can just say vector3.right. And then we're going to set the target direction uh, to determine the direction that the player will be faced in based on the input that he's getting. So target direction equals to input.x which we populated further back and we're going to times that by right and then we're going to add input.y whoops dot y times forward like so so now we're updating the target direction which we're then going to be using to actually rotate the player so now when we're rotating him we need to check a few things so now we're going to be making a, an if statement here which is going to be fairly long but bear with me we're going to get through it so we're gonna do we're gonna do a check to check if the input vector uh, is a is not a vector two dot zero and the target direction dot magnitude is greater than zero point one, which means that we gotta be rotating our player. In this case, we wanna have a new vector three, which we're gonna call look direction, and we're gonna set that to the target direction dot normalized. Now you remember the free rotation as well, which was a variable we made earlier on. Going to set that equals to quaternion dot look rotation into the look direction, which we just normalized around the transform dot up. Oh, and I just noticed I made a mistake up here. That has to be a quaternion on a quality level. And now we need to keep a variable of the difference uh, in rotation. So we're going to do different rotation equals to free rotation dot Euler angles dot y, and we're going to subtract that from a subtract with transform dot Euler angles dot y like so and then we have our variables Euler y which is now equals to the transform dot Euler angles dot y which is just a, a shorter way to to write this basically at this point now we're going to make a, a check if the different rotation is less than zero or if the difference rotation is greater than zero so this means that we want to apply, oh sorry, I actually don't want to open it like that. I just want to write it here and do Euler y equals to free rotation dot Euler angles dot y. And now we are going to take a new variable again, which we're going to call Euler. And now we can set the Euler y into a full on vector three, which got zero Euler y and zero. And now we can apply the rotation to our player. So we're going to do transform dot, oh, dot rotation is equals to, and now we also set a speed, so we want to do quaternion.slurp. The slurp function means that we uh, do it over time and we do it in a smooth motion. So first of all, we've got to define what is it that we got that we want to modify. It is the transform rotation. Now we want to rotate it with the quaternion.euler, with which is new now our new Euler that we defined up here. Then we want to take the turn speed and times that with time dot delta time to make sure that we do it over time. And this is basically the rotation of our player and this should work. We can actually go test this now. So you should be able to see now you can move your mouse around using the camera. And now you can see if you press W, A, S and D, he's turning, which is compared to the camera. So you can see if I just hold D, he's going to always look to the right side of the camera. And now we just got to uh, apply the movement and apply the gravity and the jump function to our player. And that should do it. So if I do input dot get key down, 
which is key code dot space for jumping in my case. And I'm checking if we can move. And I also want to check if the character controller is grounded. If this is the case, we want to take the move direction dot y and make that equals to the jump speed. Else, we want to take the move direction dot y and set that equals to the movement direction dot y that we set earlier. Then if the character controller is not grounded, so we're gonna set an exclamation mark in front. We wanna make sure that we apply gravity to the move direction dot y minus equals to gravity times time dot delta time. And in the end, we're just gonna check if we are actually touching any input. So if input does not equals to vector 2.0 again, as previously, we're gonna take the character controller and call the move function as the character controller has. And then we're gonna input it our move direction times time dot delta time. And this should also mean that the movement is entirely working. So now if you press WSD, you should see that the movement is working as expected. Our camera is looking over his shoulder like this. You can see we can look freely around him, but as soon as we press the direction, he's gonna turn. Now I placed this wall here for a reason. That's one last thing is the camera is just going behind the wall, which obviously isn't very optimal. And this is one of the places where it comes in really well that we use Cinemachine. So if you go to the Cinemachine virtual camera that we have here, you can see there's an add extension feature down here. If you click on this, you should see Cinemachine Collider, which you just should be able to add simply. And then I've set up a new layer in here, which is called environment. So I'm gonna set only the environment to collide because I don't want it, for example, to collide with the play itself and maybe a lot of other things I don't want the camera to collide with. And then I'm gonna go onto my environment and I'm gonna apply the environmental layer here and just say yes to change children. And I'm gonna try and play again. And all of a sudden you'll see that the camera now reacts to the wall like so. So I know that this was probably a bit of a tough one to get through. I'm gonna do my best uh, to keep these videos short. If you want a further explanation, I can try and make a follow-up video if that's needed. But for now, uh, I really just recommend you read up on if there's any terms you don't understand, I would definitely recommend you go to the Unity documentation. Um, other than that, I hope this was helpful to you in some way or the other. And uh, yeah, a like is always much appreciated, a subscription is always much appreciated, and I just hope that you have a wonderful day.